Alrighty, so today I'm going to be talking about grandpa knives. Recently, one of my buddies, he saw my knife collection, which consists 90% of grandpa or traditional knife patterns. And he asked me, why do you have so many old grandpa knives? And I thought it was funny. My buddy, he's not a knife guy. I don't think he even owns a pocket knife. And I asked him, what makes you think these are grandpa knives? And he picked up a case stockman. And he's like, hey, look, this thing has three blades on it. It's pretty small and it just looks old timey. That was his explanation. And I thought it was funny and it made me think, what makes a grandpa knife? Because I'm sure a lot of you watching this, you know, or collect traditional knives. But for those that are just curious or clicked on this video that don't know much about knives, I'm sure these knives will spark a memory of your grandpa or your dad using a knife like these for various reasons. Um, just an example is this Camilla CUSA made scout knife. So my grandpa actually carried a scout knife just like this. This is not the same exact one, but I remember him using it to cut oranges as he watched TV. He had an orange tree in the back. And every single time he would bring out his Camillus knife and cut the oranges and he would use an old newspaper as pretty much a plate or a napkin. But I'm just show you this Camillus knife real quick. It has a can opener. It has a bottle opener or cap lifter, whichever you prefer with a flathead screwdriver at the tip. And then of course the main drop point blade or spear point blade. This one actually has the date. It was made in 1960, so a pretty old model. And then an awl at the other side to puncture holes into various objects. And then you have a bail or a lanyard holder, whatever you want to call it, to attach it to things. But this was a basic scout knife with just metal stainless steel covers. And it was just a no frills pocket knife that it was issued to military members over like a 50 year period. The government issued these to various um, military members. So basically I just want to show you some very common knives that I consider or categorize as grandpa knives, pretty subjective and <laughs> Grandpa's dads, they can carry whatever knife and whatever you categorize as a grandpa knife might differ from my opinion. But some basic well-known patterns or brands. This is a Case Sodbuster Junior. So it's the smaller of the two sizes. And this is obviously a non-locking knife. Just quick and easy opening and closing with no lock to worry about. But also with that, it comes a little bit of a safety issue. If you're trying to pierce or stab things, there's a small chance of this blade closing on your hand. But all around, a great, useful knife. Very inexpensive. They still make this knife for around 30 bucks. Even has a little Sawbuster Junior etching on the blade, which I think is really cool. I like the etching. Sometimes I'm not a fan of etchings, but this one is classic. Or classy and cool thing about case is they date all their knives so you can figure out which year your knife was made so there is a single bladed sod buster which is a plastic handle here is a stockman pattern old timer one of my favorite uh, grandpa knives to say for sure and on this stockman pattern you have three blades Let's see if i can open this without cutting myself. So you can see all three blades. Oof. Okay. So this one has carbon steel blades, hence the darkening of the metal, the patina. Um, this is the Schrade 8OT, Senior Stockman. You have like a Delrin plastic handles. You know, for non-knife people, this is called a clip point blade. You have a sheep's foot blade and then a spade blade. Traditionally, a spay blade was created to spay animals, but obviously you can use it for whatever you want. 
the sheep's foot is good for pull cuts. And then the clip point is just a good general use blade. Here's an old timer and trade created this line specifically for bringing the nostalgia of your old granddad or your old dad's knife. Um, that's why they called it old timer, old timer knives. A lot of old timers carry these styles of knives. But again, slip joint knife, which means does not lock. You can close it, open it without disengaging any kind of lock. And when I'm when I say lock, I kind of mean here's a, a newer knife that's very popular these days, a benchmade bug out. When I open this knife, there is a lock on it. I can't close it without disengaging this lock right here. And there's various different types of locks on these modern knives. And then I'm just gonna keep going. Here is a very traditional Barlow, also from Case. So a Barlow usually has two blades, a traditional Barlow does. You can also get them in a single bladed version. But it's kind of a shorter, stubbier knife compared to the Stockman's and Sodbuster. I really like the Barlow pattern. And you can see on this knife, they call it a half stop which means when you close the blade, it will stop halfway, and then you can close it the rest of the way. Still non-locking. You have a smaller blade right here on the other side for more detailed work. But like my buddy mentioned, a lot of traditional knives have multiple blades. You don't see that pretty often on more modern knives. Usually modern knives have one large blade, and that's it. Um, I know a lot of you are pretty familiar with the Swiss Army knife. I know it's pretty popular. Even a lot of non-knife non people might own one of these or have used one before. I wouldn't categorize this as a grandpa knife, but very similar. You have multiple tools on it. And you got that standard blade. Uh, this is the Huntsman version. You have even a, a corkscrew on it. There's so many tools on this. I'm going to go through all of them, but you even have a toothpick, toothpick, a tweezer, and these are just plastic handles. These are made in Switzerland or Sweden. <laughs> One of the, I think it's Switzerland. Um, but you can still also get these for around 20 to 50 bucks, depending on what, what kind you get. Still a really good knife for overall use if you just need something to throw in your backpack. Um, old timer is no longer in business. Case is, these next two are case knives. And this is a tra traditional trapper pattern. You have a, kind of a long the point blade right here. And case was kind of known for their creamy yellow plastic handles, a very classic, handle material. And then on this trapper pattern, you have another spay blade. The spay animal will, it was created for the spaying of animals, but obviously you can use it for whatever you want. And if I didn't mention before, all case knives are made in the United States still today. They're still manufacturing hundreds or thousands of knives every day. And they're pretty inexpensive. You can get a trapper for around 40 or $50. They do come in stainless steel or carbon steel, so whatever you prefer. And then here is one of my favorites, is a Case Stockman. So similar pattern to the old timer, but this one's a little larger. A little larger. And this one's kind of unique because, because the covers are bone, not plastic. So animal bone covers. And then nice clip point blade, nice sheep's foot, and then spay. So you have multiple blades to do multiple tasks. Very nice. And then these are carbon steel blades. So they will patina or darken after use, but they will rust if you do not wipe them off or take care of them. And Traditional knives or grandpa knives, they tend to be very beautiful, very appealing to the eye, very shiny. 
little on the heavier side. They don't they don't have pocket clips like this one. So no pocket clips. Um, no like easy one hand opening. They're not tactical. They they're designed just to drop in your pocket and they just swam around in your pocket. And wherever you need it, you just dove in your pocket and grabbed it and used it and then put it away. Um, some might consider this as a, a tr like a more modern traditional knife. It's not really traditional because it has lock back, but Buck 110, a very iconic, famous knife that was produced in the 60s, kind of changed the game, in my opinion. So unlike all these knives, you do have a lock right here. So like, sorry, you got interrupted by the FedEx guy. But like I was saying, this is a locking knife. You have a lock on the back, so I can't close the knife without disengaging this lock. Push down right here. And this is pretty, a, it's a big size knife compared to the other knives on the table. But I would still consider this a, a grandpa knife because it was made in the 60s and a lot of grandpas, dads, whatever, they might have tr transitioned into bigger locking knives like this because has, it still has an old timey look to it with these ebony wood covers and then brass bolsters and then a nice stainless steel foot point blade. Look at that blade. Looks pretty mean, huh? Good looking blade. And Buck, they still make their knives today in the USA. So very, very cool. Kind of common for old USA knife companies to go out of business. I know a lot have over the past 20 to 50 years for various reasons because a lot of knives today they are produced over overseas and it's kind of hard for USA companies to compete with the overseas prices. So there is the Buck 110 and you can get these for I mean they're getting more and more expensive every year with everything inflation but these go for around like 60 65 bucks but still not bad for a USA made large size knife, like a 3.75 inch blade. And it comes with a leather sheath. So you can put the leather sheath on your belt and attach it because this is a little heavy to put in your pocket, a little big. So a lot of old timers would put it in a leather sheath. I'll actually get this sheath to show you. So here is the leather sheath or belt sheath for the buck. So you just attach to your belt and then you can put your knife in this little case. Oh, I gotta shove it in there. And then snap closed. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these on people's belts. Very old timey. I'm not a big fan of belt sheets, but I know some people are still today, depending on your preference. This is a nice leather. This goes for the traditional all around. But there are some of my knives that I categorize as grandpa knives. Um, I'm very curious to see, or I guess hear what knives your grandpas or dads, uncles, whatever carried, if you know, um, if this does spark some memories, even if you don't know what kind of knife they had, I'd like to know what they use them for or any memories, just drop a comment below and I will try to comment back and talk to you about them. All right, well, that's gonna be it for today. See ya.